Uh, the United States of Babylon. Okay, I missed this one. Let's see what Greg has to say. Hey fam, have you ever heard the legend that Satan is buried under a mountain? Well, it's true. This is a fun one to decode. In my last video- Decode? We're decoding? Ooh. I didn't know we were decoding. Um, and you're gonna, he's gonna make a whole video on the Satan mountain, right? That's pretty cool. Oh, I described that Adam is one of the Satans of the Bible. He lived in the Garden of Eden, which was on the Giza Plateau. And this same character was represented in Egypt by Osiris. Okay. There was a big lore unpack in the last Lost episode. It was very core to all of this. Uh, essentially, I'm not bullshitting you. Greg is toying with the idea that he is a reincarnation of Adam slash D Jesus slash Satan. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! The green god of death and rebirth. Osiris was supposedly buried in a chamber deep beneath the bedrock under the Giza Plateau. The entrance to his tomb is right in front of the Pyramid of Khafre. They call this tunnel the Osiris Shaft. The Bible refers to the pyramids of Egypt as the, the mountain. Osiris shaft. Mountains of God or the mountains of the West. Now the pyramids themselves are not actually tombs like Egyptologists claim. They're garden machines, of course. But the pyramid of Khafre is essentially situated right over the tomb of the green man Osiris, oh, with the whoa. sphinx guarding him at his feet, depicting Osiris's green face. Man. Wow. And those are pretty old buildings, so they must be magic. That makes sense. Um, POV, you get into a deep conversation with the guy behind the counter at Hot Topic. This entire garden machine complex is a grave site for Osiris. So the Pyramid of Khafre literally functions as a headstone for the grave of Osiris. You get it? Satan is buried under a mountain. Huh. Uh... You gotta believe a lot of things to believe the stuff Greg believes, man. It's a lot of stuff. It's adding up. You might be able to get me on one of your conspiracy theories. If it's a really good, convincing conspiracy theory, I'm gonna be like, damn, maybe this is true. Fuck. Is this true? Are horses it real? Has to do. When's the last time you've seen a horse? Did they get rid of them after 2008 and the crash? Who knows? Uh, I accept that logic. But like, man, this is just so many different things. God, don't you just love history? But there are multiple Satans in the Bible, and they're not all evil. Just because something is antithetical to God's plan, God stops it or God destroys it, doesn't necessarily mean that it's evil or damned to hell. This was the entire point of my last episode. But evil things do exist in this world, and sometimes they take the form of agents of good. The entire point of his last episode was to talk about how God doesn't necessarily damn people. It did not feel like the point of his last episode. The point of his last episode seemed to, to strongly hint at the fact that Dave thinks that he is a very important person in history. Actually. <clears throat> Remember, even Satan can take the form of an angel of light. The Catholic Church, for example, has performed more evil than any other organization that exists on Earth. Period. This is exactly what I want you to keep I in mind. I called him Dave? Fuck! This is what happens when we watch Dave first, dude. Fuck. Sorry, Greg. I've been doing that with my crazy people lately. Mind when I talk about mysteries. Mysteries are not all automatically evil. Mystery just means hidden or What's riddle. Happening? The mysteries within the context of the world of the esoteric are usually referring to organizations, schools of thought, or powers that are hidden within our society. Sometimes things are hidden because their authors know the world would never tolerate their evil. But sometimes things are hidden to protect them from evil. Everyone keeps secrets for this very reason. But when it comes to Babylon, it presents itself as a persistent, repeating evil force that keeps popping its ugly head up in everything we hold sacred over and over 
and over again. The Book of Revelation is where people derive the concept of Mystery Babylon, an evil religious cult that operates behind the scenes, pulling our strings and secretly worshipping the devil. This is that very same organization that people today refer to as the Illuminati. There's a metaphor with a woman riding a beast or a... Uh... <clears throat> Illuminati, Satan, Illuminator, actually it's a good thing maybe? Probably not. Maybe Woman not. of Babylon, who ushers in a new world order, one world government, and at its center is what Revelation calls the abomination of desolation. I've already told you that most of Revelation Man, has already cool. happened, and I'm sure you can guess which organization I'm going to implicate here, but... How do we get there? Well, I'm going to take Which you back again to the time right after the Great Flood 12,000... The World Health Organization, probably? Uh-oh. ...and years ago and explain what? how the world first divided into principalities and powers that serve either the <clears throat> Father, the Savior, or the Devil. Or capitalism. But before we get started, a word from Recon, our... Recon, true, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah nice, ...offer nice, allowed cool. five-star... Done. Yeah. Our semi clip balance warmth... And the same and exact Brazilian recon, pool, uh, or you can end him with a third. The same really high and I link it unlock oh. exclusive channel. Oh. But One last walk through the garden. Green, green man, green, 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 green. Catra is also green man. Robert Adsets green man. Actually, Catra is green, blue on real life. You're green on left side, though. Your secret green man catcher. <laughs> the first time we see Gregory Irons in the Armored Skeptic storyline is oh when. Oh my fuck! He's he, he has he has started to make videos that are on his own lore now. He splits from Skeptic. This is the second one in a row. Into a separate character in the Red Pill Planet episode. He's depicting Adam walking through the Garden of Eden wearing the armor of God when he's unexpectedly confronted with knowledge represented by the flat earth. Upon learning the truth, Adam sheds his armor and escapes the garden. Later, while riding in a red car, Gregory talks about his distrust of the government, revealing that Uncle Sam is in the back seat. Who's this guy? The car crashes. There's a visual gag where Uncle Sam flies into the front seat. This is a hint of the fall of Babylon. So is it? Is it? Okay. So this sketch depicts both the beginning and the end. The result of wisdom on Earth. I don't believe in the flat earth, I've debunked it several times, but in that astronaut video I talked about how I like to champion the flat earth because of what it represents. A refusal from people like us to accept the narratives fed to us by the powers that be, and a desire to find the answers ourselves about the truth of reality. Okay, so there's such a... It's like... Yes, there are bad actors that disseminate false information. Almost all of them are political people doing political things. And they're just, like, talking head people. Like, uh... and Like, you'll see TV propaganda and shit and, like, pamphlets and shit. But, like... And I guess also, like, the the FBI and CIA are fucked up. Like, we're a totalitarian state. Surprise. This is like, a, just be a leftist, man. I, this is so weird. I think conspiracy theorists could be a secret, a secret. You know how? <laughs> okay. Hear me out. Here's my fucking red string theory. Uh, <clears throat> much like Aragorn. We're going Lord of the Rings. Stay with me. Much like Aragorn must seek the the army of the dead to defeat uh, uh, Mordor uh, and Sauron, uh, the orcs, uh, we need what is otherwise should be leftists, but they're just fucking wackadoo. Look at they have the right ideas. Hey, uh, look, look, capital is it creates like it creates like this fucking little little 
group of like a thousand people that fucking rule the whole world and it's true it's true it's just so much dumber than you actually think it's so much more fucking stupid than you actually think it is it's not a fucking cabal of well fucking like ooh, we've been plotting these schemes no they're just bumbling fucking dum-dums they just have a lot of money and we're all slaves to it because we choose to be that's the real fucking red pill that's the real one (laughs) i'm telling you they're the secret dead aragorn army at the end that we're gonna need we just gotta we just gotta figure out politically what gets them going because right now they're all maga right that's like that's the contingent you have but really it's like the real bad guy is the fucking billionaires guys you're close they're tapping on the glass. The billionaires are the bad guys thing. But they're like, actually, it's the fucking libs. Because <laughs> like, the billionaires go, no, I think it's them. The bil- the billionaires are going like, literally, it's not us. <laughs> we, it's, it's those guys. It's those It's those over there. The Those are the people that you got to worry about. The Elon Musks, that's the guy. <laughs> he shouldn't be. Anyway, you're Trump. Come on. Anyway. That's the red pill. That's the red string theory. I know I went a little bit crazy in the last episode, basically writing my own version of the Bible. And the first 15 minutes was just bragging about how smart I was. It was a total ego trip. I know a few of you must have been getting worried about me. I saw a couple comments asking if I think I'm Jesus. (laughs) Guys, I'm not going to lie to you. What is happening here? What are you looking at? Anyways, one of the signs of the end times is going to be a new world order. Yeah, I think he does. Order, one world regime, an authoritarian nightmare that will rule over us with an iron fist. And this makes a lot of sense because resources- It keeps getting weirder every time, I know! Resources are already drying up, food is becoming more scarce, and we have maybe like 10 years of oil left tops. And I understand that a lot of you are probably watching this because you want to know when the New World Order is taking over, so don't worry, I did the math on that. And the New World Order should be taking over in a little over 200 years ago. So, I hope that helps. No, the next 30 years are going to be some of the hardest in human history, if we even make it that far. But we don't need to worry about that right now. I've been working on a story concept. I want to share it with you guys. I love you so much. Your opinion means the world to me. I was thinking of making... He is such a doomer, bro. ...making this into a graphic novel, but my original concept was a film. I think he's totally I, wrong, necessarily. I was actually accepted to film school after high school. Well, the yeah, story I, think be- I, think he's, I think he's dooming them. ...begins in ancient times with a god king that arrives from the sea to teach people how to build giant garden machines that yield bountiful crops. I know, these are all my ideas here, don't steal them from me. Anyways, this god king designs an entire religion around these garden machines, designed to follow the movements of the sun, determining the best time to plant and harvest crops. At one point of the story, it appears as if this god king dies, but we see that he actually wakes up in modern times with memory loss. He lives his life here as a normal person for several years, slowly rediscovering who he is. I've seen the singing video. Realizing that the garden religion seems to have survived, and there are garden machines everywhere, some even more impressive than the ones that he designed. He celebrates for a brief moment when he finally remembers who he is, until he realizes that all of the garden machines are dead and in their empty shells operates a doppelganger cult that secretly worships the very destroyer that killed his religion. So what do you say? I know that it's a little bit clunky. I got some stuff to iron out, but I think it's a pretty good story. I specifically like the mystery narrative. That'll be- What are we doing? A fun thing for the audience to unravel, I think. I heard that the Bible's the best-selling book of all time. And I'm thinking that because my story is a spin-off of the Bible, mine should be the second best-selling book of all time. Genius. This is technically the beginning of the third chapter of the History is a Lie series. I try to make each video stand on its own best I can, but I always have to recommend you go back and watch older content to give you context. Bro, I have watched every single fucking one of these in a row, right? Minus the one where I missed, but I just watched that. So I I filled the gap. This is the next one. I genuinely, he loses me. And we watch these regularly. So I try, because I'm trying to maintain like 
Like, I, you can't fall off this. How could we ever get back on the tracks if you lose continuity here, right? I, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, <laughs> he's just lost his shit. It's so fascinating. Chapter one was a little bit of everything, an introduction to the idea of altered history, Sir Isaac Newton's theory. Of I would love to talk to this guy. I don't think he ever will, though, right? He does not like me. Added time, as well as Coneheads, Giants, the Age of the Gods, and Atlantis. Chapter two was about my quest to find Jesus. My realization of repeating apocalyptic events through solving the riddle of the Sphinx, all culminating in the realization that Jesus was someone that I didn't expect him to be. And this chapter, ah, it's just me throwing out crazy ideas for my story. It's just made up stuff from make-believe land, so. No need to get upset if I describe vivid details of disturbing things that are going to happen during the end times. And there's no need to unalive me when I reveal evil acts committed by devil-worshipping leaders and elites who secretly control the world. Bro, he's so paranoid. Because I'm not talking about the real people. This is all pretend. So everything from this point on is not real. Okay? Good. Is it, is he JQing? I don't know if he is yet. He hasn't officially said it. That's speculation, chat. You guys are jumping to conclusions. I'm staying, I'm raw dogging this experience, okay? This all started when I realized that the garden machines were very real. Yeah, he's just gonna do crazier shit than that. Garden machines are a two building complex with a rounded open top structure on one end and a towered or domed structure on the other end. Is he doing the electricity Tesla video shit? This is exactly what Tesla was Fuck. trying to recreate with his tower Fuck. on Long Island. It was in studying Tesla's work that gave me my lightning bolt moment in forgotten history. I found old documents written in Latin revealing that the open-ended structure would eject plumes of black powder and sulfur smoke into the air, collecting in a cloud, which would then release something onto the towered structure on the other end. I assumed electricity. When I paired my discovery with this art that I found depicting a fireworks celebration in the 1700s at one of these complexes i realized that i had to be right this this is a dope fucking photo and i think i think it would be absolutely amazing if even 15 percent of this photo was accurate to their experience man think about these people's little tiny lives they didn't know nothing this is the best shit they ever saw in their whole damn life buddy this is exactly what I imagined. The open-ended structure on the right would not only eject engraving? smoke into- It does look like an engraving, actually. Is it? With the little dots, as you look into it. I don't know. The air. It would collect water from an adjacent running water source and redirect it <laughs> under- Ivana, did you change your fucking color on me, dude? Neath the tower- Have you been green for a while? structure on the red. other end ionizing the air and ionizing the water as well as completing a circuit between been green for ages maybe okay maybe it used to be right on the left side and it's green on the right side because now it's a different it's a different green on both sides now and it looked funny to me in the two uh, structures thank you so much going to design dang Using this logic, I realized that several complexes throughout history too. were designed oh. to fulfill this function, going all the way back through like the Greco-Roman era to the pyramids of Egypt, and this tradition was maintained all the way oh, up please. to the Victorian era, <laughs> and it seems to have gone dead somewhere between 1812 and the 1860s. That's when all the garden machines suddenly go dead, and that's when the world suddenly forgets that the religion even existed at all even though all the garden machines are right out in the open for everyone to see. The business end of the garden machine was the towered structure, where all the fancy stuff happened, but the operating end of the garden machine was the open top structure that ejected plumes of smoke into the air. Yeah, open top. You see how open it is? 
Every single one of these was built next to flowing water. Over time, these all seem to have been converted into different things like defensive structures, so water top, towers. You're saying the top came later? But that's not what the ancient people called them. The ancient people called them fire temples. This is the fire temple of Azerbaijan. This is one of my favorite structures in the entire universe because it's one of the last remaining fire temples that is still relatively intact. The interior was never converted into a defensive structure like the rest, and it gives us plenty of hints as to how these old fire temples used to operate. The tower looks kind of strange now, sitting in the middle of the city, but this structure was originally part of the seawall, literally part of the shoreline of the city. Part of the temple was inside of the inner wall, which is why they preserved that li uh, Who would have thought, back when we didn't have plumbing, they built ne building next to fresh water? Makes you think. That's true. No, it was because they had garden machines. Little wingus on the end. The this wingus? tower would have had several enormous fire plumes raging on the roof at all times. Cool. And there are several portholes on the side that seem to be in random locations on the wall, but they actually line up with specific solar observance days. And on those days, the sun shines in through one of those windows across the <laughs> hall into the inner wall where there's a little wicket that has water pouring through a hole. When these fire temples were operating, the effect on the main towered structure further in the city would not usually have been as dramatic as this old drawing that I keep showing. Instead, the spire would have had a humble display of St. Elmo's fire on the top, along with a few parlor tricks available to the priests inside the structure to dazzle the congregation and communicate with God. Ancient people like uh, Morse code. So God has an aerial view of the earth at all times. God can see around the earth in three. Wow. Of course he's omniscient. Hmm. That must be confusing. People literally believed that that plasma was God, and that's how they worshipped him, by oh, manifesting plasma, the same way the Hebrews like manifested the plasma between the wings of the cherubim on the Ark of the <coughs> Covenant. Not only that. was that the basis for the garden religion, it was the basis for the entire Abrahamic faith. Most cathedrals, classical or gothic, follow the same logic. St. Peter's in the Vatican being one of the largest examples on Earth, with Castle St. Angelo as the fire temple on the other end. You know that this is the garden religion because they have a sun cross wheel in the center of the square, with an Egyptian obelisk as the focal point. On the Temple Mount in Jerusalem today- He, he does this. Sometimes he'll go on a roll- It has the juice? <coughs> and he'll just say, look at these garden machines. And then he'll say, look at all these buildings that look- but it's like, is this compelling? I don't, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, that's sort of, those buildings are similar, I guess. <laughs> no, I had enough for this, and I took an edible an hour ago. He's saying there should be gardens. Uh, these were actually gardening machines. A sits the Dome of the Rock, as well as the Al-Aqsa Mosque, joined together. Though this site has been modified several times over the millennia. If by the end of this you don't agree with me that this fire temple in Azerbaijan is the same thing as this fireworks fountain in the 1700s, then I will literally f*** you. What a weird sort of pick-me thing to say. I'm that serious about it. I know I'm right. Ooh, chat. Mm, hope no one sucks my dick. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, wouldn't that be terrible? The abomination of desolation. A few years back, I found an online community that talks about a lot of this kind of stuff. Oh, great. But they wouldn't That's talk great. to me, and they wouldn't share their resources with me. Resources. <laughs> the stuff that they had that was public was not really that well categorized. And a was that a threat or a common cause? Or, or, or a come on? Oh, never mind, not a common cause. Because uh, both have implications that we require me to be in the same room as you, Greg. Hard pass. Uh oh. Poor Chan. A lot of their channels turned out to be weird propaganda, too, so I moved on pretty quickly. But the point is that those mud flood guys, they all want to believe that Tartaria 
is behind all of it. And that's not at all true. They also think that Tartaria ruled the Americas before the Europeans got here. Okay, and Tartaria was the, excuse me, uh, I, had a, I had a seltzer, a, a seltzer uh, eruption. Uh, <clears throat> Tartaria was the uh, big country that never existed on the maps that were just incorrect. That they, Fuck. It's like a reflex. I wasn't thinking about him. I just said it. Why does that happen? I'm thinking about Greg. Why? Why, chat? Why have I been infected? I wasn't even thinking about him. It's a cancer. It's in me. No, archaeology does not support that at all. Instead, the garden religion was created by a character that I keep calling the Green Man. Who's Do you want to know what it is? Partly? <laughs> Greg is such a, like, fucking uh, name. <laughs> no offense, I mean, he can't help it. I just... Like, it, my mouth doesn't even really want to say it, you know? It, it's not a very satisfying... Apologies to the Gregs out there. <coughs> Who's associated... As names go. ...with nature, fertility, wisdom, agriculture, Gregory, arts, though. and science. A fall... I'm gonna try to call him Gregory. That's really nice. ...an angel figure who enlightened humanity. Dagon and Apollo are perfect examples of yeah, that the archetype. They're the literally the gods of all of those things. This is that same character that Ooh. I implied was Lucifer. Christians hate and have been taught to destroy anything pagan, sun worship, Luciferian, or Gnostic, and those fears have been instilled upon you by the Catholic Church to keep you blind. Uh... <laughs> I love the idea that uh, the Catholic Church has hidden the secret correct religion from the earth. Very compelling stuff, Greg. But uh, I, I, I think maybe just write a book, bro. Write a book. Get it out. Get your thetans out, you know? Make a world, make a little thing, dude. Maybe it'll be successful. The word babble, for example, does not refer to a force for evil. It just means talking, words, communication <laughs> through language. That's why this is called the babble, because it is the word. And the word is another name for Jesus. So one could deduce from this story that this was the Tower of Lucifer the tower of the word. Now Babylon is something different. Babylon is something that comes several years later. After the city of Babel divided into separate nations, one of those nations decided to become a giant thorn in everyone's side, and they called themselves Babylon. They were kind of like the United States of their day, arrogantly imposing their will on the rest of the world. <laughs> Using the name of God as if they're shining examples. Meanwhile, they're the most violent. I love, I love that he has uh, made what if Lucifer was actually correct into sort of the core of his uh, little, little, little bro conspiracy uh, thing. He's got like a little fanfic, guys. It's kind of fun. It's kind. Of, it's kind of like, uh, like I forget he's he re, he believes it. I'm like, ooh, sounds like a pretty cool like world idea. Like I'm a DM. I like this kind of shit. I'm in. <clears throat> and I'm a D. I have look not to brag and to my detriment sometimes, but uh, we're writing this in. Um, I have some complex stuff going on in my worlds, and I and and so I, I like the idea. Uh, of in things interconnecting, but then I remember, oh, he it believes this shit you? like in actual real life. And it's like, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, sick. I may be late, but I get to see some Greg losing his mind in real time. Oh, he's been losing it. 
violent, vile, selfish nation on the planet. The way that Mystery Babylon or Hidden Babylon manifests today is described in Revelation with the metaphor of the woman on the beast or the woman of Babylon. And this woman in the metaphor is promiscuous. And you probably notice that there's a certain word I'm not using to describe her. I, I'm refusing to use that word. But this promiscuous woman is part of a greater metaphor about seven brides that are preparing to marry Jesus. These seven brides represent the seven churches of Asia that were started by the disciples after Jesus died. Wedding day is coming and- No, he was gonna say whore. I'll say it. The whore of Babylon. It's okay, we can say these things. <clears throat> it's all right. These are words. Um, probably for uh, monetization purposes, but uh, Sarah will totally remember to bleep that um, for YouTube things, and they won't even scrub that anyway. We're way too deep in this video. I don't think you should give a shit about this. Maybe I'm wrong. And the brides are preparing for the rapture. These seven churches were real and they practiced- Nothing wrong with being a whore, in my honest opinion. Agree! The now dead original form of Christianity that only existed for about 40 years. And where are these churches now? Gone. That's right. Or so it appears. Uh, the story in Revelation says that this bride did not banks. properly prepare for wedding day and broke her promise to Jesus. She was not ready for the rapture, oh, no. so she was left behind. So that means like the, the church movie that with was Kirk left Cameron? behind after the apocalypse was the false church. Whoa. A church that would have had every incentive to erase all memory of the rapture from history. That rapture happened in 64 AD with the end of Nero's reign. That woman is still riding the beast today and she had already put her abomination of desolation in the holy place. Now I need you to sit down for this part, cause... Okay. And we can't go down any further. I'll go up. I'll move it up a little bit. Okay, we're back. You might not have thought of this before. To you, this is... I might not have thought of this before. At the end of, hold on. Oh, holy shit. Is he talking about the ruins in the first churches in Turkey? I've actually been there. Some cool shit. I would share pictures, but apparently taking them there is illegal. The ender. I don't respect the laws of Turkey, but I respect you respecting them. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the New World Order. Um, I want to, I wanna, so he's going to tell me something about this because I've never heard you might not have thought of this before right, to you shit. this is Jesus because right. you love this as Jesus I love I don't but do you remember how in my Jesus episode I said that this is secretly an image of the wow which means this is secretly an image of the great phoenix the great phoenix is the dragon of revelation this particular image of Jesus on the cross is, is the abomination of desolation. And you add on the fact that the Catholic Church... Uh, yeah, this doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, Jake, if I break the law in Turkey, I wouldn't be able to be in stream anymore because I'd be in jail forever in a foreign country. That's true. Why would they extradite you to Turkey? You don't have to share them. I'm not trying to talk you into this. <laughs> uh, I do think that's fucking stupid, though. Church has clearly molded Jesus into something that supports their version of the religion and the fact that they keep <clears throat> focusing on suffering and sin and eternal damnation. This is a false idol of Jesus. An abomination depicting the desolator, the Catholic. Wow, true. Catholics are the only ones that use this version of the cross. The Protestants all use an empty cross to imply the resurrection, the more important part of the story. The Catholic Church damn near fetishizes suffering, and they- I agree. I agree. Yeah. Big time. Uh, Catholics are fucking sickos, bro. 
get off on convincing their followers to live their lives that way, to give endlessly in exchange for the fear of eternal damnation. The thing that Jesus already defeated, yet it was the Catholic Church... <clears throat> Greg's right more than twice. He's, he's, he's right about some stuff. He just doesn't have the second... He, so, he can be right, and he goes, oh, and then... Okay, so you're right about something, and you go, okay, and then what do we do from there? And he just goes, skirt, and he has the wrong take after that point. He's he's right, and his reaction to the correct information is wrong. <laughs> Not correct. That invented and popularized our modern version of hell. Yeah, Th like he's identifying problems in society. Like he brings up capital constantly, but he's never actually used the word. This is literally why the second commandment says, do not worship engraven images. Depicting Jesus at his most humili humiliated in a state of, I don't know why I could say humiliated, uh, in a state of suffering made to appear as the destroyer as he dies in public. Because an engraven image can mean anything. Rise and fall, rise and fall, Babylon, whoa! The kingdom of Babylon was in modern-day Iraq, and their central garden machine Iraq. was a ziggurat called Edamanonke. If Ooh, Edamanonke. That's pretty fun to say. If you Google Tower of Babel, a source somewhere is almost oh, Babel, man. certainly going to try to convince you that one of these Babylonian ziggurats was the Tower of Babel, but no, that's a different thing. Exactly how they designed their ziggurat, I don't know, but this is where we find our first taste of corruption within the garden religion. This is where the mystery begins. The ziggurat itself was one of the coolest ever, really. Its layout was ultra classic, likely with an entrance temple at the top of the stairs, with the main temple being on the highest platform. There are several ziggurats that have the same layout as the temple mount. So uh, this is a mishmash together audio stuff, buddy. It's okay, I mean, I've been there, but like, you know, this is just make another take, I think. Uh, maybe your CP, I don't know. But you spent a lot of time on this. Another take completely fine. Usually you're doing just great though. If you ever watch this for any reason, hatefully. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Greg. Please let me in your bunker if the shit goes hits the fan. Down in Jerusalem. Today as well with the El Aqsa Mosque at the top of the stairs and the Dome of the Rock on the they highest platform. Dope. This was the layout of Solomon's Temple as well. And the platform of the Greek Parthenon Necropolis is set up the same way. With an entrance temple at the top of the stairs, with the main temple at the highest point. These platform temples are literally pyramids. Nimrod was married to Sammy Ramus, and after he died, she insisted to her people that he had ascended and become the the sun itself, or the sun god, much the same way that Osiris evolves into Ra. So becoming a false prophet, she essentially maintained her position of power in the government. Why are we doing this fucking thrashy, like, shit in the background? Having turned her dead husband into a false god. So I'm about to hear, like... This was the first woman to ride the beast system, enacting her will on the world, essentially taking the role of Isis, or Mother Mary. One day, Sammy right, Ramis Sam, turned up Sam Raimi, that's correct. pregnant, and she told everyone that it was the sun's rays that immaculately conceived her child. She gave birth to a son she named Timutz, who was considered <laughs> the Messiah. <laughs> I want to name my kid Timutz. To moots, Little guy, he just wants that titty, dude. Look at Timoots. Getting after the titty. True, dude. I get it. Sometimes. The living representative of the sun god Nimrod. So this is our first antichrist. This evil, corrupted version of the garden religion would become pervasive, corrupting everything in the world and it would never stop. In the story of the Tower of Babel, right after the Great Flood of 12,000 years ago, humanity was using language to communicate with each other to organize as one cohesive group. And our goal was to create a massive utopian city with the tallest garden machine ever built as its central point. Uh... <laughs> we did black Uh... I don't know if it was a garden machine. Uh, cool, though. 
cool. That's do you hear do you hear what you're uh, saying is good though? Do you hear yourself? Basically, this is where the god of this earth taught humanity how to build and operate garden machines to continue the garden religion. And this was all a result of our ability to communicate with each other. Yeah, and then God fucked it up, man. I don't know why. And we can deduce that the leader of Babel is not that evil fallen angel Azazel that we call Satan because he would have died during the Great Flood. But God's punishment and decision to spread humanity across the planet and confuse our language had nothing to do with the fact that we used language to build the tower, nor the fact that we used knowledge to build garden machines. He just didn't like that we were dictating the terms as to where his throne would be and that we had all... H bear, thanks for the 18 months. That's a whole lot of corn, a whole lot of time with it. Yeah, thank you. It is. I appreciate it. Gathered in a single city state. Right before the ad, it made too. It too Perfect hard timing. for him to win our bet if we all got along. If anything, the lesson that I take from this story is don't put all your eggs in one basket because God will kick your basket. Really, the story is less about the moral lesson, and it's more to explain how pyramids ended up all around the world, all aligned to Orion 12,000 years ago. Oh. Oh, aligned to Orion. Um, alright, here's how here's how my explanation is. I'm sure this wouldn't satisfy um, Greg, but <clears throat> this is the explanation I have for pyramid-like structures being found throughout. Um, number one, pretty simple construction design. Um, number two, very sturdy construction designs. They're lasting. Uh, number three, um, very easy to orient because of how the world is. Like, the reason north is north is because of how everything works, right? So, like, it makes sense that they would orient them in those ways. If they cared about something like this, they'd be like, oh, how should we orient this? Ooh, where will the sun be in the morning? There we go. We'll do that. And that's where the sun is uh, on that day. And then if they were particularly observant, you'll see that some of them, not all of them, are oriented along like astrological times, which implies uh, that these people had uh, time to put into these kinds of things. Because if you think about it, I mean, unless you're building this stuff, you're essentially just camping, right? So, I mean, building permanent structures for the first time. So, yeah, I mean, this is this is we should build a big fucking pyramid would absolutely come up if I was camping with me and a hundred of the best people I ever knew. Uh, we would build a fucking pyramid out of just boredom. Like it would totally fucking happen. Um, anyway, that's my explanation. Uh, they're just chilling. They didn't know what the fuck was going on. And of course, you know, they have magical thinking and stuff like us. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. They saw, yeah, they're mountains. They're good. They're dope. That's why. They're easy. Any any kid would be like, yeah, of course I'm going to make that. You make pyramids on the beach with yourself when you fucking hang out there. At least I did. Like, before I ever saw a fucking pyramid, you know, they're just natural structures. <laughs> it's a natural building structure. Anyway, that's my explanation. His is uh, more cool. His is cooler. Mine is probably just correct, though. Ancient people were much more vividly aware of pyramids and the garden religion as a whole. If God thought that this religion was evil, he wouldn't... The garden religion. Everyone has to garden or we die. The garden religion. <laughs> ...have let us continue to practice it after Babel, nor would he personally have taught the Hebrews to continue the tradition with the temple. Over time, as cult... Not to diminish the capabilities of ancient peoples, but it surely it couldn't do. be that hard to build a pyramidal structure. It's not that hard. I will diminish the capabilities. The best thing that they did was on the, uh, you know, using tools to move these things along. But it took tremendous effort. Certainly, certainly not the way we would even get close to doing it now. Um, it's because it's not the best or more sufficient way to do it because we have machines that are better. Um, like, it just took a lot of effort. <laughs> yeah, it's real cool, though. Yeah. Their, their effort wasn't great, but that, you know. I mean, their effort was great, but, like, their capabilities were low relative to ours at the time. I mean, you know, cutting-edge technology, literally. Um, I'm exhausted. Have a good night, all. Greg, stop spending so much time sequestered on the dark web. Oh, no, Haradan. Sleepy? Too sleepy for for Greg's final, like, 
who knows what kind of breakdown he could have in 15 minutes. Cultures forgot how to build and maintain these garden machines like the Europeans. They maintained Damn their tradition Europeans. of following the sun's movements and the stories of their gods for agricultural God, purposes, Europeans. because it'll always be beneficial to know when to plant and when to harvest. The Christians would eventually come to call these people sun worshippers or pagans. Pagans. You know what I think the cool thing about let's 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 we're gonna move on for a second and we'll go come back, but it's all connected. Um, I promise. Uh, I think a really cool thing is we were talking the other day um, about because <clears throat> um, religion came up and Tony Horse you had mentioned or someone else had mentioned um, like native cultures and stuff. Like I love I love the idea that uh, I mean I lament until we came along part but before that until we came along we colonizers um, there was like like the society was so harmonious with the fucking space they lived like not always obviously there's gonna be difficulties in that lifestyle but like it wasn't perfect uh, and obviously I think like you know there's there's <laughs> pros and cons to every lifestyle but nonetheless um i think i think there's a lot of uh of uh just really cool you're dim when you when you go to the ancient alien shit you diminish you diminish the fucking cool shit humans do when we collectivize in spaces sometimes it's because we're all pulling the same direction sometimes it's because of authoritarianism and fear or whatever you know bad shit happens but like sometimes we're just really like cool little animals that do really neat things and i think native cultures like like where humans really started civilization is when i consider them native right where you started your little fucking culture where did that begin and seeing what that i i know that colonization happened and it's not like something you can put back in the bottle um and i do love the multi um you know i in spite of that i think what we do here now uh in america could be fucking cool i do like that we have like a mixed bag of people and my experience as a human being is broadened by having different people around, um, which, you know, <laughs> but I think it would be cool to be able to, if you're going to do all history stuff, if it was just never touched by that, like what fucking happens? I just want to know. Um, I mean, shut off the xenophobia slider on a simulation of earth and just see what happens. You know what I mean? Just see what happens. Obviously, you're going to have cross-pollination, like, gradually over time. But I, but not colonizations. It's different, right? Like, tourism is one thing. Visiting is a thing. And, like, oh, we'll, we'll you know, we'll have people that live here so that we can, like, you know, I, you know. I think there was a way that you could, like, fucking visit this world, this new world, as a white guy. As a colonist, as a Spaniard, as a Portuguese person, as a fucking, you know, Englishman later. Like, I think there was a way you could have been like, okay, we'll also live here. And it maybe not would have been a bad I, bad thing if you could have, like, been like, oh, okay, yeah, this is like a little plot. Uh, do stuff here. But you just, you, you invite the engine of capitalism. Man, I can't, I can't, I can't even imagine, man. Let's go back to that. That's that's the uh, there was there's been times of, of vast cultural exchange throughout all of these uh, periods of time. You know, the Vikings actually had a, a, a really reasonable, not violent uh, cultural exchange with a lot of different people, but they get a bad rap because they were so cool when they were violent but they're actually the descendants of the garden religion. Then all of a sudden, some guy named Jesus comes along. He says, Sh they were really cool. Surely that generation will not perish before the return of the Son of Man, saying within 80 years, there will be an apocalypse. 
And sure enough, within 80 years, there is an apocalyptic event. Referenced in the book of Matthew by saying when Jesus died, the earth opened up and the dead walked again. 50 years later, Emperor Nero declares himself God. He's literally nicknamed the Beast. The number of his name adds up to 666. Wow, that's pretty convincing stuff. Numerology, huh? Hmm. Hmm, I'm convinced. He tortures, kills, and crucifies every single original Christian he can get his hands on, and then out of rage, burns down Rome while playing his loot. The Vikings were going to take the English women with the dark magic of rites and practicing hygiene. Couldn't have that. <laughs> well, they did like, I mean, don't get me wrong, the Vikings were not like 100% good people. <laughs> Uh, I'm just saying they get a, a worse rap than they deserve. Not that they don't deserve any bad rap. But they, well, hey. uh, also, they did have good, pretty good hygiene. Um, and interesting people. They had flaws. <laughs> they had many flaws. I have dis disagreements with how they ran their cultures. But very cool. Very interesting. I like little... Cause these, are, these are... It's literally tribes. I mean, that's tribal white guys. That's, that's like... You know... <laughs> This is clearly describing an apocalypse. Is That's it? a weird painting of Nero with a volcano in the back. Uh huh. I wonder what that means. The painting of Nero with the volcano? Can I? Okay, hold on. Uh, Nero tiger painting. When was it? When was it done? Wow. Can I? Can I? Is that? Is that really not a thing I can find? Is that Nero? Oh, here it is. Uh, Nero at. Uh, when was this made, my friend? 1850, when, uh, 1900? 1900? I thought, so that was after the, uh, mud flood loss of, of information, though. Greg, Gregor, Gregory. So this is just, this is just because volcanoes are cool is the answer, obviously. And remember, I said that the apocalyptic cycle is every 400. Actually, if I recall correctly, didn't a major volcano go off? I don't think it was Pompeii or Herculaneum. I think it was something else. I read a fiction book. Was this during the reign of Nero? I read a fiction book, a fictional book about a Roman detective for an English class in college. And I vaguely remember it. What the fuck was that called? Anyway, they solved a mystery or something, and it was in Rome. But it was, like, during that time. It was actually kind of cool. Maybe years. Not. Well, 400 years after that wow, is man. the apocalypse that I described That's in my right. Sphinx video, where Pope Sixtus III implemented his Mark of the Beast system. So basically, Babylon had become Rome, and then Rome. Hey, Chad, I got a freshie if you want to interrupt this guy. Rome fell. Then Babylon had become the Catholic Church within Rome, and then Rome fell again, and then Babylon became the Holy Roman Empire. Apocalypse after apocalypse, God keeps rejecting them, and they keep pretending to be his holy church. United States of Babylon. There really isn't a denomination of Christianity that's <laughs> immune to this. Like the dogma that. exists to keep you blind and to keep you serving the beast system. However, religion is... I wrote a uh, short story in college. Um, I forget what it was called. Essentially, it started with a character waiting for an elevator, and they got in and they started having a conversation with the guy in the elevator. And over the course of the conversation with the guy in the elevator, you found out that he was going down for a while uh and he was he was going to one of like dante's layers of hell and he was talking to different people i think it was called the elevator man it's the guy that worked at the elevator what floor was that it is not dominant in our mindset like it used to be like nietzsche said god is dead and leading into world war one and world war two god was replaced with a new form of worship patriotism Welcome to hell. There is, of course, a modern iteration of Babylon. Not wrong. The Catholic Church is not quite what it used to be. Someone else 
rules the world today. If you've been led to believe that nationalism is necessarily better than a one world system, and that endless choice of religions and denominations is necessarily better than a single religion, then I'd like to hit you with this question. Have you ever heard of the phrase, divide and conquer? We're so busy competing with the endless horde of misinformation that we don't have time to organize against the beast. We're operating within its framework. But of course, there's this looming threat of the new world order run by the worshipers of the destroyer. <laughs> this is where a normal person ought to say, and the system that we are uh, helping is capitalism. And then we just, uh, we are like, yeah, dude, doesn't that suck? And then we smoke jigs. We smoke a joint. We're like, yeah, man, it's trash. And you pass it. And you watch baseball or something together. Or a movie. We just watched John Wick 4 on Tuesday. Banger. The Dragon of Revelation. Best one in the series. Saturn. Yeah, Dance. I know. You want to hear how America is modern Babylon. I'm sorry you had to wait to the end of the video for this, but I promise it's worth it. America was never a Christian nation. Is that what I was looking forward to in this video? America is the modern Babylon? Okay. That's hilarious. Religion was only ever used as a tool to control people and justify evil acts. Uh, the slave trade is a perfect example of that. The King James Bible itself was designed to control people. The signs of Babylon are so obvious in the United States. Namely, the fact that they worship their founders and their leaders as gods the same way that the Egyptians and the Romans did. Um, is he gonna say because they were enlightened, they were part of the Illuminati? Uh, that's legit Dr. Mumby shit? What's that? I hinted that Trump was Antichrist only because he leaned into that more than any of the other presidents before him. Remember the meme, God Emperor Trump? Where do you think those things come from? I mean, Trump even looks like a Caesar. They literally minted temple tokens in Israel with his face on them. What's, what's a temple token? I'm not Warhammer 40k? Oh shit. That's a Caesar move if I ever it. saw one. Does that mean the president has to come in the Potomac every year? I don't know how that logic follows, McPlatypus. Could you explain that to me? Like, uh, like I'm an idiot. <laughs> really confuses the whole give on to Caesar, what is Caesar's thing, eh? One of the most well-known... Oh, she calls white people Babylonians? Maybe I am a Babylonian. Shit. Conspiracies in the United States right, has dude. to do with the layout of Washington, D.C. There's the garden. I'm sure that you've heard of this before. For example, around the Capitol building mm -hmm. itself, That's you right. can clearly see the... You can clearly see what looks to be like a little kitty. You know the ears? You know a little bow back there? A little ears? A little snout? A little nose? Meow. You see it? Maybe a bunny. You can see a bun, too. I see a little bun action happening. Yeah. The shape of an owl. And, of course, don't forget that Everyone knows that bunnies go woof. Pentagram. These are harmless, though. Wait. In Washington, D.C. sits a giant Egyptian... Pentagrams are harmless. ...obelisk. In it's tradition, true. this is You can draw as many pentagrams as you want. Hold on, wait. I'm gonna be a baddie real, real quick. I'm gonna draw a pentagram on my napkin. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I did it. Nope. Ooh wee! Watch out there. I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna summon Orcus. It has to Represent end. the foul. The pharaohs held a public masturbation event into the Nile for the year's fertility. And Greg said, what? I'm sorry, McPlatypus. Did you say, say? Did you say that the pharaohs held a public masturbation event into the Nile for the year's fertility? Is that a real thing? And Greg said we worship presidents like the Egyptian did. I might also... Is that a thing? They... What? Did they stutter? Let's revive it. 
Annie, relax. She wants she wants a river bukkake immediately. Everyone come on the river right now. Hate a cumless river. Can't stand it. Is this America? Where have we lost? Ridiculous. Palace of Osiris pointing to the heavens. <laughs> But you've named it for your first leader. Lake Erie. A man. That's not right. Keep in mind that this is where the people phallus? gather to inaugurate the new Caesar president up, every four to eight years. These are holy grounds to the Masons. Then there's the Mount Rushmore monument. Okay. First, it's carved on a sacred mountain. The indigenous people have protested Stretch. its creation, but that wasn't an accident. The creators knew that they were vandalizing a sacred site. They oh. did that on purpose, trying to create these as divine representations of your hero leaders on a holy mountain. Like, stop and think about this for a second. Uh -huh. Who carves giant heads of their leaders on the side of a mountain. Psychos. Crazy people. Oh, thanks. We're agreeing. Crazy people carve giant heads of their leaders on the side of a mountain. Uh, unless they're from Gobleki Tepe, and then it's fucking cool and proof of the green man. <laughs> uh, but also true. Yeah, you, I agree. Those are smaller faces for sure. Sculpture-sized faces are a little more reasonable. I agree. But more than that, George Washington's well, okay, uh, psycho. Okay, well, okay. head is carved to resemble the head of the Sphinx. It's hard to recognize it without a nose, but paired to crazy people together, it's clear the face is carved. With the guy responsible for Mount Rushmore was a member of the KKK. It That's not surprising to be. at all. Uh, fun fact: Mount Rushmore is unfinished. That's why there is a rubble at the foot of it. What else were they gonna add? the same angles. Washington's wig even resembles the condition that the Sphinx was in during Washington's time, weathered by the wind and sand. And famously, one of Washington's portraits is missing a strip on the bottom. This actually represents the desert sands that had filled the Sphinx up to its shoulders. The implication here is that they're venerating Washington as if he is the green man. And the way that you ever thought about how wigs may resemble human hair? Whoa. Washington is facing, lines him up with the winter solstice. That's exactly the direction the green man would be facing if one was a green man. Essentially aligning him I with think. the red man instead of the green man. Wait, or that's the exact opposite of what you would be doing if you were a green man. Of course, yes. And that's just yeah. a kick in the butt man yeah they, what a kick in the balls they've made man. washington the messiah of the united states and before you ask yes george washington is a mason you're literally worshiping Currently, men as a current mason gods are you trying to get destroyed by god <laughs> what are you thinking god you're crazy destroyed by crazy god. guys so what happens to this babylon well according to this guy uh -huh. the armies of the north wipe it out canadians mounted on mooses they're gonna come through and lance me and that doesn't mean canada though i can't imagine canada is going to love you very much by this point it's gonna be russia if you go further north russia that's Russia. That is, uh, that's where Russia is, further north. Um, I hope you really have a contest. The mighty is your. Thanks for the seven months. I'm going to toss it out there. Not super worried about Russia. They're not doing great against just Ukraine. You know? It's not, you know. Maybe one day I was, I was like, oh, maybe Russia's bad, you know. No, you keep going north. No, you go north, and it doesn't matter if technically you're going south now. It's north. And northwest? Also, I'm pretty sure Russia has some stuff. If you can you if you went just north from here, can you touch Russia before technically going south? It has to do. At any point down that line? I think you might be able to. 
Can you? Uh, you can't. Ne- not next to. Uh, it'd be Northwest. Maybe you're right. They don't own any of the uh, icy parts. I know that there was a conflict over the North Pole, right? Aren't they? Aren't they uh, grumpy over that? Or they were maybe in the eighties. Can you believe this guy was in the atheist community on second thought? Yeah, you can. Yeah, of course I can. Look at these fucking weirdos, dude. <laughs> I'm the last fucking one. That's China. Those will be the agents of America's demise. The only reason that they don't do that now is because the United States still more or less controls the world economy. And they do that through their control of oil. But... Just oil? No. It's not just that. You're about to run out of oil. And when that happens, the world's not going to need you anymore. Uh-huh. New York and L.A. Uh-huh. All right. Those are big oil cities. He's right. Uh, not not New Orleans. <laughs> not New Orleans. Nope. Not maybe Houston could be affected by something like that. Nope. L.A., New York. Ain't nobody coming here, dude. Um, apparently our economy is based on that. I'd be fucking shocked. I'd be, I'm pretty sure our economy is pretty much wrapped up in the whole military situation, buddy. Um, uh, you better believe we'll have access to that Russian oil <laughs> by the time that's all, uh, that's all said and done. You better believe whoever gets re- replacing Putin. <laughs> yeah. Those will be the first to go. Oh shit. Okay. Wow. He's so he's so intense. Next line. Yeah, keep that in the shot. It's very good. In uh, pretend. Make believe land. In my in my story. Saved it. Dude, the vibes are fucking through the floor. Th- through the fucking floor. We're hitting bedrock vibes. Powerful. With all the things that I've talked about. Kirk W'd him? Oh, no. When chat's Kirk W'ing you? Oh, it's gotten bad. But in the series that have been corrupted the rare by history, Kirk w. humanity, philosophy, religion... The one thing that people have been able to hold on to dear is the Bible. At least this hasn't changed in thousands of years, right? Here's mine. I've had this one for a really long time. Scribbled notes all over it. It's funny that as a secularist, I've developed a much greater appreciation for this than I ever did as a Christian. I never thought... A secularist? It's like a weird way to put it. Um, I don't know. I guess I guess I've always been of of the opinion that make it sound as fucking normal as possible so it doesn't uh, spook the normies. So whenever someone asks, like, "Hey, what church you go to?" or something like, which is not often now, um, I'm like, "I don't." I'm like, oh, what do you what do you what do you believe in? Oh, no, nothing. <laughs> and then we just talk about it. It's okay secularist I'm a secular humanist that's for sure I thought the Bible was 100% accurate but there is real history in here I also knew the original inception that's not necessarily true because I mean I don't only value humans of the Bible was kind of sketch the Hebrews literally compiled the Bible while they were captive in Babylon They used ancient Sumerian texts as references for their creation and flood myths. Yet despite all of this sketchiness, it's believed that the word of God was protected by God for thousands of years. It's considered established fact by Christians. In fact, it's so important to the Christians to believe this that I had to find out for myself if it was true that they had not been changed. And this is when I started to look into the Dead Sea Scrolls. So first I decided to look into the religious sect that supposedly preserved. The Dead Sea Scrolls have such a cool fucking name. 
that they get wrapped into as many conspiracy theories as you as can say Dead Sea Scrolls because they're fucking cool. That sounds cool. The Dead Sea Scrolls. Ooh, what are those? These texts. And I found some people that were saying that they were this obscure cult that started somewhere around 300 BC leading into the first century BC. So the Dead Sea Scrolls are a hotly contested uh, set of writings uh, that are considered apocryphal to many. Um, I think includes things like the Book of Lilith, uh, the Book possibly of Mary. There's there's de de writings of like Jesus's wife. I don't know. I think I think it would be fucking awesome if the reality of this is if you go into like. I don't know, Doctor Who, Sandman, I don't know, time travel. <laughs> Who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls? Uh, fanfic. Fanfic would be so fucking great. You know, just a fiction book. First fiction writer. I mean, not really the first fiction writer, but like, you know, a fiction writer. Great stuff. The, the first uh, Fifty Shades of Grey was just Jesus fanfic. And it seemed as if they were like a precursor to Christianity or a precursor to even Gnosticism itself. And it was a really interesting narrative. So I decided to dig a little deeper. The scrolls were discovered in 1947 in a site not too far from the grave site of this cult. And I thought that these scrolls were legit for years. It was even really important to me that they be legitimate. But these scrolls are supposed to be a big deal to all of Christianity because they're supposed to prove that the Bible has not changed in over 2,000 years. So it's a big deal to know- Some of those are Gnostic Gospels, not Dead Sea Scrolls. That the Bible's the exact same as it was when Jesus was here. Because if Jesus says that that was the correct Bible, then that means that that must always have been the Bible. You get the logic? But there's a problem. So the whole story began to unravel when I started to look into the scrolls themselves. First of all, the scrolls do prove that the Bible has changed in the last 2,000 years. I've showcased many of those changes in this show, and there's many more that I've not yet talked about. But fine, it's only changed a little bit in a very long time. 2,000 years is a long time, and hypothetically even, it could be even longer if Jesus had validated that Bible, right? So are they 2,000 years old? Someone pointed out that the main scrolls, including the Temple Scroll, are written in cursive block Hebrew. That didn't pop up in the record until somewhere around 800 AD, but Oof. I was confused by this because I- Oof. I was always taught that Jesus spoke Aramaic and that the first century Hebrews were using Aramaic scrolls. And the scrolls themselves are leather. They're written on Valyrian sheepskin. Yeah, I, I didn't think they were dated for 2,000 years old. Am I crazy? Which technically was available in the first century, but everyone was using papyrus. Everyone. So the likelihood that this cult went out of their way to get Valyrian when everyone was using papyrus it's not very likely, it's slim chance. But say we're leading into the 11th century and Jerusalem is occupied by the Crusaders. Egypt is controlled by the Muslims and they're not trading papyrus with Jerusalem. They're not trading papyrus with the Christians. But do you know what the Christians do have access to? Valyrian sheepskin and cursive block Hebrew. So what if the Catholics created a new version of the Bible at that time, stuffed it away in an old gravesite, hoping to have it found later to legitimize the new version of the Bible, legitimize their version of Christianity, and legitimize their control of Jerusalem. What I mean, what if it was just a copy of that kind of stuff? That you're talking about. I mean, why does it have to be like a plot? Why couldn't it have just been like found and, well, they also had another copy of it because that's what happened. They would copy these things. You know? Like, why does it have to be like some kind of like little thing? It's plausible. 
It's plausible that there was a political motivation in the creation of the Dead Sea Scrolls. I think there's a political motivation in all, all of almost all of the writings in this, in the Bible in general. Like I think it's pretty obvious. So like, sure. But why is it like a nefarious? Ooh, yes. In two thousand years, they will not have this debate. <laughs> like they don't give a fuck about that. They're thinking about themselves. Like. <laughs> There's not this fucking, like, forethought and shit. Humans are not elves or liches. They don't have the time span to do this kind of stuff. What if... It's just so weird. He hasn't said anything... He hasn't said anything necessarily about the Jews. But, he, I mean, he has said the word cabal. We'll see. The Muslims were right. He, I don't think he and is, the, though. I don't think he's going there. I think he would run into that unintentionally, but I, th I don't think he's trying to steer it there, personally. Bible had been changed. And the final red flag is that these were supposedly stored to be kept be wrong. secret. I'm going to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt. But they were stored right by a gravesite. Literal grave robbers could have found them. That's the worst place to hide them. It's like they were specifically hidden in a place to be found. So yeah. After all these lies I've discovered about history. Oh, wow. Whoa, what a bad dog, dude. What's one more lie? Fuck. Whoa, goosebumps. I got goosebumps. Whoa. Uh, cool, man. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, dude. Uh, I mean. It has to do. Yeah, the, the Bible's not true. I agree. Panic ties dropped. He's so insanely cool. That's right. He is cool. He is so fucking cool. He ripped the shit out of it, dude.